Now, you are a senior reporter at NBS, and you've been doing a lot on this. Please give me an understanding on how this transpired. Well, uh, this was uh, in... Um uh, in the month of May, when members of parliament came together to actually pass this law. Now, this was from a directive uh, by the president, where he uh, brought in a document directing the minister of finance to uh, actually introduce this law to make sure that uh, the government is able to curb down uh, what the president called Lugambo in local language, meaning gossip. Now, the president, uh, after directing uh, the minister of uh, finance, then the law was tabled in parliament that it was passed. So now, uh, uh, the, the Uganda's three principal telecom service providers shut down access at the stroke of midnight of 1st July at the start of the new financial year, requiring every payment that is $0.05 uh, dollars per day for access, sparking off outrage among the social media users. It has also attracted uh, noise and also media coverage across the continent. Uh, but now the news that we've uh, just received, actually from yesterday, the conversation has been about the petition. A petition has been filed at the Uganda Constitutional Court challenging the social media tax, which took effect on Sunday. Uh, of course, this is a team of young advocates uh, from Cyber Law Initiative Limited, uh, Opio, Raymond Mujini, journalist with NBS Television. We have Baguma Moses and Okir Emmanuel with Silva Kayondo. They are saying they want to challenge this and they are ardent believers in the rule of law and fundamental human rights and freedoms and constitutionalism. Michael? Canary, that's very interesting, and we've seen the government of Uganda hoping to get at least $100 million in revenue by the year 2018-2019 financial year. How possible is this, given that now we're looking at Ugandans actually opting out to use VPNs as, you know, the last resort, since now the government has introduced the law? Well, it is true that government touches to raise at least uh, 103 million US dollars. That's 400 and billion shillings in Ugandan shillings annually from the social media tax. And, uh, well, it is possible, uh, that is, if uh, the Uganda Communications Commission, that is the regulator of the telecom companies, is able to actually track down every uh, person who is uh, paying for this tax. Uh, it's about 0.05 uh, US dollars. Uh, uh, but also we've seen that uh, many young people have downloaded virtual private networks or the VPNs that will enable them bypass this specific tax. But however, what the young people do not know or the people who are accessing social media is that the VPNs are being... Uh, activated using local SIM cards and they're being activated in Uganda so the telecoms and the regulator that is Uganda Communications Commission is able to track down every VPN that is redownloaded of course you cannot block um, all the VPNs in the world uh, but every time you activate a VPN in Uganda and using a local SIM card it is easier for the regulator to track down that VPN and blocks it actually yesterday uh, the, uh, the Uganda Communications Commission uh, uh, lead uh, chief uh, that is uh, 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 he said that uh, he is able to develop a system and they have developed one that is going to block every VPN, which means that actually the target of 103 million US dollars annually can be achieved by the government. But we are waiting to see what the constitutional court uh, will say about that. It's not until it yeah. pronounces itself on the matter okay. and, 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 you know, put down the matter, then we are able to say the government is unable. Canary, uh, that's, that's very interesting now. Uh, we did see about 17 million Ugandans out of the 41 million people using social media. And uh, we can go about the VPNs as much as we want, how they ruin the batteries and how Uganda can uh, lock down on them. But uh, Ugandan people have been very reluctant on finding out how the government use their taxes. Now that they're being taxed directly on a daily basis, does this wake them up? We have about one minute, so kindly brief me on this. Well, uh, the, they had never felt the pinch, actually, if uh, this social media tax was introduced within the bundles. I do not think they would mind. One, they are angry because they're paying directly. And two, they are angry because it is the president uh, uh, who is introducing this tax. And lately, the president is not very popular, especially online, on Twitter and on Facebook. Uh, there is uh, so much uh, uh, criticism for him. So uh, they, they, they came out because they're being taxed uh, uh, directly. And that has actually affected uh, some of uh, the programs that the government 
government wants to introduce because they look at it uh, as uh, the, a way of, um, you know, swindling of funds. What is actually painful for most Ugandans and young people, uh, they are saying that uh, there is no accountability for this money, even the money they've been paying for. Because they talked about double taxation, uh, they say that they've been paying for both airtime and data. Where some tax is actually uh, 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 taken off or deducted. So they're saying that this is double taxation and now they want to challenge that in court uh, b b given the fact that the president did not, did not actually give a fundamental reason on why this tax should be introduced. His reason was to manage uh, and uh, put down hate speech or what he called gossip.